Okay, so welcome back to my channel and uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. It's Christmas Eve today, and I want to make a special deep dark chocolate ganache cake. Um, I know I have a chocolate cake made on my channel before, but this is a, a really special cake. It's going to be very chocolatey, and uh, it's, it's delicious. I think I made it a couple years ago, and uh, it was very good. But uh, I adapted the recipe from Taste of Home magazine. But since it's Christmas Eve, I wanted to make something special. And uh, I've been debating for all day, not all day because it's actually morning, but all week about which kind of cake I want to make for Christmas because I always like to make a special cake. But anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy the recipe. And uh, let's get started. These are not all my ingredients, as you can kind of see. I have them kind of laid out right here. Um, my oven's heated to 350. And these, it calls for three eight inch square pans, but I only have nine, so I'm going to try that. You could also use two round pans, or I might do two square pans and uh, some cupcakes. I haven't decided yet, but anyway, I think I want it to be square. But this is the, I want to show you, this is the uh, chocolate I'm going to use. It's bittersweet. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is put six ounces of chocolate in this bowl. And then I'm going to get some hot coffee, and we're going to pour the coffee over the chocolate. Chocolate melted with the coffee, and I put it in here so I can pour it into my mixing bowl easily. Oh, and by the way, I am so sorry. I said 350. It is 325. To, that's what your oven should be on. So, now I'm going to start. I'm just going to go ahead and put the dry ingredients in together. You don't have to sift them. So, this is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And here is one cup of cocoa powder. And I'll list these in the description box in case anyone would like, anyone would like to make this. It's really good. And uh, this is, here is one and one-fourth teaspoon of salt and three-fourths teaspoon of baking powder. Let's throw that in there. Oops. Sorry about the banginess. And this is two teaspoons of baking soda and all my ingredients are at room temperature i left my eggs out and my buttermilk out for a little while now we're going to mix this together with a whisk so we'll be ready when the time comes because we're going to alternate this mixture with the buttermilk mixture make sure you mix that cocoa powder in and you can sift it if you'd like to, because I know cocoa powder has lumps in it sometimes. Like I said, this cake is very chocolatey. And you, then you have to add all that coffee. It's got a really rich flavor. I might should have sifted this. I see some lumps. Oh, well. Okay. So let me move over to the mixer. Four large eggs. And you could use a hand mixer as well but you will have to use a mixer, I believe, because we're gonna beat these until they get light and lemon color, and then we're gonna start gradually adding this sugar. I'm gonna use my whisk attachment, and I'm gonna put these on. And when they start changing color, I'll bring you back and we'll start adding three, I'm sorry, I didn't say, it's three cups of sugar, granulated sugar. See, they're light and lemon colored. So I'm gonna start gradually adding the sugar. I'm gonna keep it on high. I'm just gonna add. Well, I'm not I'm gonna. I'm not gonna be too too slow about it. Just I'm not a lot of patience. But anyway, it's gonna be thick and pale when we're done. So I'll bring you back when I finish adding all the sugar. It's on low. We're gonna go ahead and add in, add in our chocolate mixture. We're also gonna add in. Three fourths cup of canola oil. I'm just gonna add this in, and you want the chocolate mixture to cool slightly, but I'll let mine cool a little bit. So let me get that in there, and then we're gonna add that. I don't wanna waste any chocolate. All right, three fourths cup of canola oil. Okay. And now we need two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Let's turn this up a little bit. Now I'm just gonna eyeball the vanilla. And I'm using vanilla bean paste. It's my favorite. I'm 
let's turn it up a little bit. It's a, this cake makes a lot of batter. All right, now we're gonna move this out of the way. And I'm gonna take my flour and cocoa powder mixture. And I'm just gonna start alternating that with some buttermilk. So I usually like to add about, uh, about this is a 3 fourths cup measurement, but I usually like to add about a cup at a time. And I'll just mix it on slow. And anyway, and then I'm gonna pour in a little buttermilk. I love to use buttermilk in cakes. I don't know why, I just, I really like it. This, this, this is gonna be a, a really big cake. This is one I'd only make for special occasions. So, let's add some more buttermilk. And they usually say the end with the flour, but uh, I don't always do that. I don't know if they, they don't say it on this one. See how much better that is? It's going to be so chocolatey. It is a mess too. Almost done. Throwing that buttermilk. Oh, and that was one and a half cups of buttermilk. I don't know if I said that. All right. I'll be right back when we add the rest of the flour. Doing with the spatula, you want to make sure you get all around. I had a couple of little pieces of, not pieces, some flour. Like I'm trying to make the fit the camera. You can see me, but I'm just gonna pour it the best I can, as even as I can. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and use the three pans. I'll just have to shorten my baking time. I don't know if I'll be able to show it exactly where you can see. And I'm not very good with the parchment paper. Hopefully this will work, though. Just, I usually just pour some. And then I go to the next one. And chocolate batters are usually a little bit thinner than other batters. Let's pour a little bit in here. A little bit more. And you certainly could just make two layers and make cupcakes or use round pans. I'm trying to see. This is a, this pan's a little bit different, so it's gonna be it's a little bit wider, I think. I'm just gonna it doesn't have to be perfect. You could just strive for perfection, but I usually mess something up. Okay, just a tiny bit more, and uh, I usually put my pans on the uh, my other baking sheets but they only one will fit on one of my baking sheets so I'm just gonna bake these directly on the oven rack but I usually don't like to do that okay so I didn't trip too much now the, the, what I'm gonna have to do is I don't know if all these are gonna fit on my rack but I'll come back and tell you if I have to I'll show you by the actually. way you want to tap them these have a Lots of air bubbles in them. I'll try to tap those out. All right, I'm just gonna see. Yeah, I'm only gonna be able to fit two, so I'm gonna have to be rotating my racks, my pans in the in the middle. These are gonna bake for about probably about uh, 30 minutes, but I'm gonna set my timer for 20 minutes and just keep an eye on them. Okay, it's been about 12 minutes. So actually, because they won't fit all on the middle rack, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate them very gently. I don't know why my cakes always look like that on the top. If somebody knows that, let me know. 
I guess they're supposed to look like that, but all my chocolate cakes do that on the top. So I'm, oh, I'm gonna move this one in the center. And don't, ex please excuse my oven. I haven't done this self-cleaning like in a long time. So now I'm gonna put it back on for about, about 12 more minutes. So and that, they're probably gonna take longer because it's uh, even more bad than I expected for the nine inch pans. I'm kind of glad I didn't have the eight inch pans. Anyway, I'll be back. These two out. These pans are a little, not as deep as the other pan that I have, but that's what they look like. And uh, I took them out, I did the toothpick test, and I actually like to take mine out when they have just a couple of crumbs on them because that means that they're, they're going to be really moist. So now we just have to let these cool, but while we do that, I'm waiting for the other cake in here. That one's going to come out. This might be a hard cake to uh, ice. Oh, it's our put ganache on but anyway um it's almost ready so once the next cake comes out the last one comes out of the oven we'll make the chocolate ganache i'm about to make the ganache my cakes are cooling but i just wanted to show you uh i don't buy this one that often i want it's very thick and it's supposed to be two cups but i didn't get quite two cups so i'm gonna have to get a little my walmart one out but just i want you to see just how thick this is uh it's extremely thick Anyway, I just wanted to show you that. A little bit. I like this one a lot, and I like Land Lakes a lot. But a lot of it stayed in the cups. So I'm just going to estimate about... Anyway, I want to thin it out a little bit. So we're going to bring two cups of this to a light simmer. I still have to get my chocolate ready. And I'm going to use... Uh, you need 16 ounces. And I don't have quite enough bittersweet. I'm going to throw in just a couple of ounces of uh, semi-sweet. But anyway, I, and we're gonna take this. I don't want this to drip everywhere. I'm gonna turn this on low, actually, because I'm not quite ready. Oh, and I'm dropping everything today. Oh, I'm, sometimes I worry about layer cakes. They're not, I like to do them. I used to like to do them a lot, but I'm kinda out of practice. And now we need five teaspoons of light corn syrup. And I'm just going to estimate you need to make this in advance because it needs to set up for about 45 minutes. So we're just going to do one, two, three, four, five. A little bit extra. This is going to help it stay smooth, I believe. So like, like I said, I have it on low for right now. And I'm also going to add a pinch of salt. And I'm going to add some vanilla extract, which it doesn't call for that, but I like to add that. So let me get my chocolate ready, and we'll go on to the my next chocolate. Step. Now, I have a bar. I would probably use just the bars if I were to do this over again. But here's the the uh, look at the bar, and then these are the bittersweet chocolate chips, which that's fine. And these are the semi sweet. So I actually like to mix my chocolates up a little bit. So I've added just a touch extra because I think my cake layers are a little bit bigger than. Uh, a little bit bigger than that that pan I showed you. I think it might be a little bit deeper than the other two. But hopefully it'll work out. And I cheated. I put my cakes in the freezer. Uh, I like them to get a little bit hard because the chocolate cakes are so tender. I find they fall apart very easily. And we're not going to put a very thick layer of ganache. It's going to be it's going to be a little bit thin, I think because it's so chocolatey already. And then I have uh, also, I also have some caramel I need to use, but I'm not gonna use it in this recipe. I'm gonna find another one. But I've made, uh, I tried the pretzels and I was gonna make a video of the, the uh, caramel and chocolate dip pretzels, but it, they didn't work out quite like I wanted. I'll show them to you. Let me get them out of the refrigerator and I'll show them to you. I'll be right back. They, are. Well, they didn't turn out too bad, but I was hoping for something a little bit better but anyway they're still delicious and I made some pecan pralines I'm gonna share that in a in a video soon uh, those are very easy to make but you have to have the exact temperature and you have to scoop them out very quickly or it will crystallize on you the sugar oh I dripped on my stove I'm to wipe the, the uh, pralines they are so delicious so my cream's heating up and I also have some cookie dough that I have to bake. Yeah, I mean, I make cookies, but they were uh, not, I think I had already shared the recipe, so 
I didn't video that. I spilled again. Once you heat this uh, to a simmer, you want to just pour it over your chocolate and then let it sit for about, about five minutes and then it's going to come out really, really smooth. And I'm going to add my, uh, I'm actually going to put a little vanilla in it right now. Not much, just about a teaspoon. I like that uh, extra flavor. So I'll, I'll come back whenever I have it melted and I'll show you what I'm going to share. Let it sit for about five minutes and you just want to mix it and it doesn't look like it's going to come together at the beginning, but it will. Just keep mixing it and you could use a whisk as well. Might be a little faster, but the recipe says you want to give this about 45 minutes to set up and to make mine set up a little bit faster. I might put it in the refrigerator. It's going to be gorgeous though. You know, baking cakes, I find, take a lot of patience. And you have to be in the right mood to bake a cake, I think. And I'm always in a hurry, it seems. I really wanted to, to be honest with you, I really wanted to make another cranberry recipe. But I figured I was bombarding y'all with cranberry recipes. I don't know, they just, they're just so good and versatile. But anyway, I just, I really like the, the, the white chocolate cranberry cinnamon rolls. Or you have to try those. And if you missed that video, please watch it. It is so good. I hope I, I, I heated my heavy cream long enough. See, it's coming together very nicely. It's going to be just right. There's nothing prettier than a bowl full of chocolate. So that looks good. So I'm going to check on my cakes. I still have to find, you know, I don't have a, a cake a carrier that is for square cakes. So I'm going to try to find something to put that cake on. All right. Well, I just wanted to show you the, the ganache. So I'll be back. Okay, here's the, I'm going to use, put the big one at the bottom. Wait, let's clean up our mess. Sorry about that. It's okay. We got, we're just using a plain cake board. That's the best thing I can Do find. Do I it upside down? Uh... Yeah, do that. Put it upside down. I just wanted to show you how how we are going to take them out. And I like them frozen because you don't have as many crumbs. Well, we have a few, but... So, we're going to put some... Next? No, we have to put ganache in the middle. Oh, okay. So, I'm going to take my ganache, which I let set up in the refrigerator a little. It's a little thick, but that's okay. I like it that way. It's gonna be great. And you can use as little or as much as you like. I'm just gonna take some. Now I'm no cake decorator, but when you have a good ganache, it's a lot easier to work with. And to be honest with you, <clears throat> I'm gonna do this for presentation. I might, to serve it, I might have to just cut it and put it in my round cake, cake holder. I just uh, really want this to be a good picture because this cake is divine. I've had it before and it's just, and it's really not too hard to make. So I'm just gonna do this and you wanna spread it a little bit to the edges because I'm gonna cover the sides. And like I said, you use as much or as little as you like. So I'm gonna try to make sure it's even. You might have to take some off. Okay. Now I'm going to, if you can see that. And now I'm going to grab the next one. And these are very moist. I, I make sure that I did not over bake them. So this one I'm a little afraid. I'm going to just flip it upside down. And then take the parchment off. And then I'm going to continue. So let me cover this and then Here's we'll the be last back. layer. Now I put my, I, I might have refrigerated my ganache a little bit too long. So I just put it in the microwave for about eight seconds because I'm, I don't want to have to make extra. So I'm going to put, I'm just showing you that I put a, you know, a kind of a thin layer on the sides, but it's really easy to work with. The cakes are really cold. 
so I'm not having to deal with a lot of crumbs. It's a good trick to know. But I just put it on top and then I bring it to the edges. And this was the perfect amount of ganache for this cake. And this is going to be a monster cake. I have to figure out how we're going to decorate it. But see, it's a tiny bit thinner, which is just fine. You don't want it to be runny. I mean, unless you do want it to be runny, it's totally up to you. That would be delicious too. But I just wanted to show you, I bring it to the side and then I just kind of, but you can tell this one's definitely uh, warmer than the one I used previously. But, it, you know, okay, I'm gonna finish doing this and then I will, Okay, here's the cake. Now, it's covered in ganache, and it's not a very thick, thick layer of ganache. You want it uh, thin, unless, you know, you want to do it a different way. I'm just telling you how the recipe is. But uh, it's already setting up nicely. And so Ella's going to decorate it, but I wanted to show you what it looked like. And we put this on this board and wrapped it. And I'm no cake decorator for sure, but it's going to be so delicious. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what it looked like right now, and we're still working on it. And... I can't wait to take a, a little taste. bit of caramel. Actually, we have a lot of caramel left over from our pretzels. So, we, we put a little bit in this. I don't know if we put enough. Just a tiny, like a, probably maybe two tablespoons. And it might be too thick, but we're going to drizzle it from this. Hold on now, let me show them. This bottle that we have, if it comes out, we're going to kind of drizzle it across. You can make it. I'm trying a, to get it to go all the way down the bottom. We might have to add a little bit more, but that's going to be a, a delicious addition. I think we need to add some more. Yeah, we're better. We're probably going to have to add some Here's more. Gonna, she's going to put some. Yeah, um, we, we don't have enough. Hold on. Sorry about that. I'm going to try to take a bite this way, but I'm not going to be able to get it all the way to the bottom. Now, remember, I did have it in the freezer, so it's a little cool still. Mm. It's not too sweet, but it does have that deep, rich chocolate flavor. And you can tell the coffee. You can't taste the coffee, per se, but you can tell that it enhances the chocolate. I can't describe it. I'm terrible at describing these. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's so moist. Mmm. And this is definitely a treat. Definitely a celebration cake because it's humongous. But I hope this video wasn't too long. We wanted to share our Christmas Eve with you guys. I wanted to make a special cake. I haven't baked one in a while. Really happy with the outcome. I'll put the ingredients in the description box uh, probably uh, tomorrow or the next day. Because I want to post the video today So because it's Christmas Eve. But thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe for more delicious recipes. I have some good things coming in coming up a, a very good new cabbage soup it's so delicious anyway thank you for watching and merry christmas bye